Hello. Today's story is called No Roses for Harry by the author and artist of Harry the Dirty Dog. So Jean Zion wrote the book and Margaret Bloy Graham did the illustrations. No Roses for Harry. No Roses for Harry. Harry was a white dog with black spots. On his birthday, he got a present from Grandma. It was a woolen sweater with roses on it. Harry didn't like it the moment he saw it. He didn't like the roses. When he tried it on, he felt cozy and snug, but he still didn't like the roses. He thought it was the silliest sweater he'd ever seen. The next day when Harry went downtown with the children, he wore the new sweater. When people saw it, they laughed. When dogs saw it, they barked. Harry made up his mind then and there to lose Grandma's present. When they went into a big store to shop, the children took off his sweater and let him carry it. This was just what Harry wanted. First, he tried to lose it in the pet department. But a man found it and gave it back. Then he tried to lose it in the grocery department. But a lady found it and gave it back. He tried to lose it in the flower department. But a little boy found it and gave it back. The children didn't let Harry carry it anymore. They made him wear it. As they started home, Harry was beginning to think he'd never lose it. When he got home, his friends were waiting to play with him. But Harry didn't feel like playing, so they left him alone. As he sat wondering what to do, Harry noticed a loose stitch in his sweater. He pulled at the wool just a little at first, then a bit more and a little bit more. Harry didn't know it, but a bird was watching. In a minute, Harry had pulled out quite a long piece of the wool. The end of it lay on the grass behind him. Suddenly, a bird flew down. Quick as a flash, she took the end of the wool in her beak and flew away with it. It all happened before Harry could even blink. The sweater began to disappear right before Harry's eyes. First one leg, then the neck, then the other leg, then the back, and finally, the whole thing was just one long, long piece of wool flying off into the sky. The sweater was gone. Harry could hardly believe it. He barked and jumped with joy. Then he ran out of the yard. He ran down the street barking, thank you, to the bird over and over again. The bird and wool were just a tiny speck in the sky, but Harry kept following them. He came home thirsty and tired and was having a drink in the kitchen when the children ran in. We got a letter from Grandma, one of them said. She's coming to visit us, shouted the other. Harry thought of the sweater and his tail drooped. Before Grandma came, the family looked everywhere for the sweater. They wanted her to see how nice Harry looked in it. Of course, they couldn't find it. Only Harry knew why. When Grandma arrived, Harry ran to her with his leash. Then he sat up and begged. All right, Harry, said Grandma. After I've had my lunch and a nap, we'll go for a walk. That afternoon, Harry and Grandma and the children started off on their walk. Harry barked happily and pulled towards the park. 
when they got to the park, Harry pulled harder. The children let him off his leash and he ran on ahead. He seemed to be looking for something. All at once, he stopped under a big tree. He looked up and began to bark and wag his tail. Grandma and the children came running. They got to the tree and looked up too. Suddenly, one of the children said, I see a nest. It's made of wool, said the other. And it's the very same color as Harry's sweater, they shouted together. It is Harry's sweater, exclaimed Grandma. Just then, a bird looked out of the nest. Look, Grandma, look, shouted the children. Harry gave his sweater to a bird. I wonder how he did that, said Grandma. The birds sang, and Harry wagged his tail even harder. At Christmas, Harry got a present from Grandma. It was a new sweater. Harry liked this one very much. When he tried it on, he felt as cozy and snug as the bird in the nest. But best of all, it was white with black spots. I'll see you in just a little bit. Hello. I wanted to show you a couple things about this story that makes it so much fun for me in one of my favorite books. First of all, I wanted to show you that if you were to crochet or knit something like Grandma did, Grandma knitted or, or crocheted a sweater for Red, Harry. Purple, blue. They use blue. one needle for crocheting and they use two needles for knitting. And what they do is they just love, love. take the yarn and they start making little loops and they pull it through each other. And so you can, you can knit something, you can crochet something like Grandma did. So she made Harry a sweater. Well, Let's pretend that this is Harry's sweater. Are you allergic? Yeah. In our story, Harry found a loose thread and starts to pull it. If you have something that is crocheted or knitted, it's all hooked together with loops. And little by little, as the bird pulled the string, the sweater got smaller and smaller and smaller until finally it just disappeared. And the bird was able to take that whole string up into the sky. Well, this is what re reminded me of the story. Yesterday, when I was walking, I found this on the ground. It's a little bird nest. It used to be in the grass, and the bird's not using it anymore, and it just kind of fell right where I was walking. But look at this, guys. Birds don't have hands. They only have beaks. And they make nests using only their beaks. And they mix all of these things together to make their nest. <laughs> Inside, there's little pieces of hair. On the outside, there's leaves. There's pieces of grass all put together and holds us together to make a little nest for when they have their babies. I found another nest last year. This one came out of the tree when the wind was blowing. It's actually from the trees that are right above me. But look at all the pieces. I think what this bird did was he found all the lint out of the dryer and put it all together, wound it all together with his beak and made a little tiny door right up here. So the bird could go in the door all the way down to the bottom and the babies would have a nice little place to live. When you first see this, it just looks like a plop of fur and fuzz and all kinds of things put together. But when you look up close, it could be a bird nest. So when you're out taking your walks, look up, look down. You might find treasures like I did. Look for those bird nests. They're pretty cool. Thank you.